by a distinguished advocate and a leader in the field. She has been at the forefront of efforts in spinal bifida awareness. Her contributions have significantly impacted the global conversation on spinal bifida. She is a professor of neurosurgery at George Washington University, USA. She is chair of G4 Alliance. Please join me in welcoming Professor Gail Russo. Written 
a, a Lancet review of the 30 years of class one evidence was published and uh, Gatsbeth was formed. Well, why should, why neurosurgeons should be at the forefront of this problem? Well, we argue that we have a unique vantage point on the scope of suffering that we've just heard about that families uh, encounter when they have a family member with this condition. It's a neurological illness. There are a number of other issues related to it that are urologic and orthopedic that lend themselves to neurosurgeons leading the way but creating a community. And we provide care across the lifespan, which of course these patients need. There's, there's rehabilitation and other psychosocial aspects to this condition. We also studied the neurosurgery workforce and because these patients are unfortunate and require often multiple operations over a lifetime that in some pediatric neurosurgical practices, as much as 30% of the pediatric neurosurgeon's time was spent taking care of just this one condition. Uh, we know that there needs to be an increased role for neurosurgeons uh, in the global public health. And, and we argue too that neurosurgeons have some unique qualities of energy, grit, and perseverance that were uh, set to, to be the first to tackle an issue like this. And then we're coming into the pandemic where there was a lot of talk about vaccines and how important prevention was. And we've all just been through COVID and the benefits of vaccines to reducing the morbidity and mortality of that condition. But if you look at cost effectiveness, folic acid fortification is much more cost effective than even the proven benefits of a vaccine. So fortification for every dollar spent saves a country $27 and the healthcare costs and lost productivity. So we started to refer to folic acid fortification in the general diet as a quote unquote vaccine to be able to prevent uh, uh, spina bifida. Uh, and it was a lost opportunity, just like not having a uh, um, vaccine for COVID was a lost opportunity and why it mobilized our pharma industry so rapidly because it could be seen to be so beneficial. So there was all this preventable disease and yet we had 30 years of class one data that showed that we had a readily available solution. So GAPS was started and wrote uh, papers and monographs that brought the, this problem to the attention of other medical and surgical disciplines. Then we saw, and this was key, we started to seek the support of other collaborators, other stakeholders who were not in the medical community. <coughs> so these would be uh, people who were nutritionists and millers, for example. So creating a very broad tent for this initiative. So we had collegial stakeholders, we created a nurturing environment so that physicians and non-physicians were working in equity and mutual respect together. And then we built on the broad spectrum of people who were part of this coalition to actually write a uh, resolution for the World Health Organization so that every country would have the opportunity to get involved. Uh, and Finally, we looked at uh, very large nonprofits like the Rotary Club International for help with this. So one of the products that we produced for people who were part of this growing effort in Big Ten was a slide deck so that we could have socialization of the knowledge that you've gotten today uh, that was shared with every specialty and with the general public. I won't go through all those slides, but then we had um, uh, opportunities for uh, people to have access to informatics and to these kind of scanning rubrics so that it was easy to get access to information. Just a couple more slides that were in the slide deck. We worked with groups like PUSH that had already started to characterize the levels of spina bifida uh, in every country around the world. And then we finally started to gather support for this resolution. Uh, and someone who's going to follow me next here, Kemal Kotney, was very important, a pediatric neurosurgeon, PhD in translational medicine, 
and Kemmel really was able to uh, uh, break into the Ministry of Health of his own country of Colombia, which became the first nation to champion this resolution at the World Health Assembly, bringing on several others and leading to the passage of the resolution in May of last year. And he'll tell you more about it and about the way that coalition was built. So why do we talk about that specific issue? It's important. It involves up to 300,000 births of infants with spina bifida every year, but that's nowhere near the huge numbers, the tens of millions of traumatic brain injuries, for example, for which we're also responsible. Well, I'm coming back here in the conclusion to those things that those initiatives that the global neurosurgery community activated early on, the WHO liaison committee chaired by Walt Johnson, the Global Neurosurgery Committee, uh, chaired by Terry Khan, and the G4 Alliance, which is the home for global surgery, and the, this International Society of Pediatric Neurosurgeons that formed a network that was a broad group of uh, stakeholders who were able to make change happen. So we have great energy that has been sustained and have built a practical knowledge base since 2015 when the resolution strengthening emergency and essential surgery was adopted by the WHO. We now have an opportunity to embrace this new progress, which up to this point in time, we had not had eff efficacy of efforts in the public health domain of neurosurgeons, but we do now. We also, in this process, through this case study, if you will, have built relationships with other surgical disciplines, with other non-medical stakeholders, with multilateral organizations and with governments, which will serve us well. You know, early on, uh, when the WHO Liaison Committee was created, colleagues in neurosurgery would say, you, know, you you go to Geneva and tell them we need to have a CAT scanner in every district hospital. And that's not the way things work exactly. You need to build consensus and work in coalitions. And so we understand the process better so we can make it work better for our patients. Neurosurgery has a large burden of global disease, TBI, stroke, degenerative spine, et cetera. We've got a lot of work to do. Our domain is responsible for a lot of the ills in public health. And so therefore, I think we need to actively, creatively expand our workforce and then enhance our workforce's capacity to guide health care strengthening. We need to champion expert solutions to public health conditions that are in our domain. Just like if we were at Harvard Business School and we were tackling a product or a problem, we've now got one example of how this can be done. And Kemmel's going to tell us next about what the implementation phase of this project is about. Thank you very much for your time.